Hello fashion sellers, I hope you are well. If you are new to my channel, I'm Colleen G. Lee and on my channel I have sewing techniques, I do refashioning of old or even new clothing and I also have a segment where I show you garments that I have designed, pattern drafted and also sewn. And if you are into that sort of thing, consider subscribing and let's get started. So in this video, I am going to be showing you, as a beginner fashion sewer, the kind of tools that you need to have in order to start that long journey into making amazing sewing projects. Now, the thing is that the tools and supplies I'm going to be showing you, I have had for many, many years. Many of you know out there that I've been sewing for decades. And um, so the tools that I'm going to be showing you are tools that I've had for such a long time that I've highly recommended that if you are wanting quality um, equipment that's going to last for a very long time then I am going to show you where you can purchase these on Amazon. Now I am an Amazon affiliate so I do get a very tiny um, commission from whatever link that you click on in order to go ahead and purchase. So with these, I haven't, I don't think, I don't think I bought anything, yes, I bought one thing that I'm going to be showing you from Amazon. Just one out of the numerous things that I'm gonna show you. That's how long I have had my tools and that's how much they are worth it. Some of them, one or two were gifted to me and when I mean gifted, um, I don't mean from a company, I mean from my dear mother. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go into that as I describe um, each one of the um, tools that you would think about getting as a beginner fashion sewer. So let's get into it. The first things I'm going to be showing you are scissors. Scissors, we all need scissors. Um, these scissors are what I have bought from Amazon. Now, um, with the scissors, these are dressmaking scissors and they do last quite a long time and it really does depend on how many projects you do. And I've probably bought a few pairs, maybe three or four, since I've been on YouTube. Because um, it's, it's very important to make sure that you keep very sharp blades. But saying that, I would definitely recommend that and I have put a link to the Frisca scissors that you can purchase. And the next scissors are these ones. Now these are what, are, I think it's pronounced as Kai scissors. Actually, they're shears. And there is kind of like a difference between scissors and shears um, in the industry. Um, and shears tend to be a lot longer and super sharp. These are just amazing. Um, the story behind these ones is that my mother um, had a pair of these and you know, um, she had them for many, many years. I can remember as a teenager, like, Mum, can I use this as And my mum's like, nope. <laughs> okay, Mum. So um, eventually I purchased my own pair several, several years later, and I've had them for many, many years, and they're super sharp. You may not see me using them a lot when I do my sewing techniques on my channel, but I definitely do use these when I am actually cutting out my designer garments. Um, like I said, they're super sharp. They're a lot more expensive, but they are definitely worth the money. So I'll put a link to um, this type of shears, this, um, shears, I should say, in the link as well. Um, the story behind it is that um, my mum had a pair, like I said, and I did borrow them eventually when, I, you know, as I got older and stuff. And yeah, I, I misplaced them somewhere. Sorry, mum. Um, but they are so super, super sharp. And yeah, uh, yeah, I do love them. But they're quite hefty as well. Some can be a bit weighty, so, um, but these are quite lightweight. So like I said, I've been using these for years as well. And I do love them. The second pair, well no, the third pair of scissors are what are called pink and shears. Now they have a, um, not, a, not a, what's the word I think of, a jagged edge. Yeah, that's a jagged edge. There's serrated scissors as well, which are a bit more finer 
jaggedness on the edge. So these are pink and shears, and I've had these several years as well. Um, these are great for kneading seams, um, especially when you're um, using cottons, that type woven fabrics. Don't you don't need to be using these on this? So definitely worth um, woven fabrics. And yeah, these are yeah super super cute scissors. And yeah, I'll put a link to those in the description. So those are the scissors that I would recommend, including the shears, um, that I would recommend for you for cutting fabrics. And remember, please only use your fabric scissors for your fabric, not for your paper. Um, paper scissors, just get regular paper scissors for cutting your patterns and cutting paper. Do not use your fabric scissors. Okay, those out of the way. The next I'm gonna go for, I am going to show you something that um, you can get in Amazon, but not this. <laughs> and these are my, this is the tailor's ham, and I made this. This is the second tailor's ham, and also the roll. This is a ham, and this is now called a sausage, so um, yeah. Um, you do need both, um, so I have put, as I said, I have put links to all the products in the description. Um, but I had a super time when I actually made these. They actually stuffed with sawdust, and oh, like I said, this is my second one that I made. The first set that I made, I gave to to my mum eventually. So out of my many decades of sewing, yeah, this is my second set, and I just, I just love them and I use them all the time. How many years have I had these now? I've had these about, about six years, six, seven years, as long as that. Um, previous ones I had before, that must be well over 15 years. So yeah, so I made my own and I had so much fun making these. I also made the pattern for them as well. So they may be a little bit bigger than what you probably would get from a store, but that's what I wanted when you make your own. Yeah, <laughs> and also this is what you call a seam press. And you can also use this for a seam press as well. Um, this is for like curves and collars and sleeves. And these are this one I made so that you don't get impressions when you actually press your seams. So yeah, so a lot of ideas of me <laughs> inventing my own tools um, have come from me teaching in education and also in industry. And I just love this sort of thing. Yeah. Next is going to be some calico. Now, this is what is called unbleach cotton fabric, and it's well used in the industry. Um, perhaps not as much in the sewing industry, but it should be. Uh, I would highly recommend this when you are testing out patterns, and especially if you're testing out patterns that you want to use time and time again. And the great thing about this is that you can mark on this fabric and also use this as your pattern for cutting out your fashion fabric. Um, that's my technique that I've been using for many years, decades, and I highly recommend that you do get some calico. They do come in different weights, and um, it's a great way to practice your pattern drafting skills as well, and also remember to mark on it, sew on it, you know, do what you need to do in order to get the perfect fitting pattern and you can transfer that pattern onto paper if you wish, or just keep it in your calico. So I highly recommend that. And next is going to be a steam iron. Now, yeah, over the years, I've had a few steam irons. And um, let's see. And I suppose it's changed from brand to brand as well. I can't remember the make of my very first steam iron when I actually got my first one. No, I can't remember. Um, and the different brands, obviously, as we all know, and it's best to get a steam iron and the iron that's got lots of holes that are in there. My man is a bit dirty at the moment. There's a reason for that. I'm, I'm going to do a video tutorial about how to get rid of your, your um, the marks off the sole of your iron. It's a technique that my mum taught me. Um, so that's coming soon. And it's always, like I said, best to get a steam iron and the wattage. Get as high as wattage that you can get. 
The highest I've ever found is about 1800 watts. So the, the higher the watt, um, the, watt um, the better the iron. So yeah, obviously I, I put a link to an iron that I would highly recommend. And like I said, make sure it's got many holes on there because that creates the steam. And be careful that some iron companies do put holes on there and they're not really holes. So be careful of that. The next one, like I said, um, <laughs> that was gifted to me, is um, this steam iron that my mum bought me many years ago. And um, yeah, it's the technique to pressing when it comes to making beautiful garments is that I use both of these. Um, I tend to use this when I've got a lot of fabric that has wrinkles in it. I tend to use this because it doesn't disturb the fibers when you're plastic when you are using an iron and you're flattening it so i tend to use this and i also tend to use my steamer halfway through construction construction of the garment as well and that helps me create beautiful garments it keeps my garments uh, professional looking it keeps my garments looking expensive and if i was to sell them yeah i will be selling them in the thousands that's why it's so important that you have a good system or method of pressing that you don't press your fabric too much that it starts to lose its um, characteristics and starts to be looking a bit dull. So there are techniques to ironing that I probably should do a video tutorial on actually to show you guys how to do it and how I do it and how I keep my garments looking amazing by the time I finish the project. That's the key to um, amazing pressing techniques. So I've showed you the, the hands and the pressing and the scissors. The next is going to be, a lot of people prefer to use rotary cutters. Now the rotary cutter that I have is this one. And I've had, I do have a couple of these. And like I said, they are good. I tend to use them a lot more when I'm creating patterns. And I think the reason mainly is because of space and also a cutting mat. You def if you have one of these, you are definitely going to need a cutting mat. I do have a video tutorial on how to use this and also the cutting mat, and I'll also put that in the description along with the list of the, um, tools and supplies that you can get. So um, at the time when I bought these, the, 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 that's what, that was mainly the color that they came in, in this yellow, and the cutting mat, I'm gonna show you now. Is this one or is this green? Yeah, those are the colors that you mainly have, but nowadays, nowadays they come in amazing colors. So I believe the cutting mat comes in black, blue, and gray that I recommended in the link. So you do have a choice. There are a lot more fruit colors that are out there as well. Um, try and get the biggest size that you can. The one I've just shown you is what is referred to as an A1 and it tends to be the largest that you can buy. And from what I can tell is that that is the largest you can get, especially in the UK. And if you are a person that prefers to use a rotor cutter rather than using scissors, then you're going to need about three or four, depending on the space that you've got to, you know, you've got to work with. So do um, consider that. Um, but it is a good method to be cutting out fabric, especially if you're cutting out very delicate fabric like silks and chiffons. Yeah, I would definitely would recommend using a rotor cutter. There is a technique for using scissors, but it's just a lot more slower. So yeah, so that is the rotor cutter and also the cutting mat. What else? Um, yeah, the sewing machines. You definitely need sewing machines, don't you? <laughs> Right, I'm going to show you a sewing machine that I'm using at the moment, which is which is a Janome and also the overlocker serger that we call them in England. We call them overlockers. So I'm going to show you those that I'm using at the moment. The sewing machine is a little bit more modern, um, but if you are a person that's very confident as a sewer, as a beginner sewer, um, and you want a more computerized sewing machine that's got buttons and you're quite excited about pressing buttons and, and seeing what they do, then this is a sewing machine that I would go for because it's what I'm working on at the moment. The overlocker is a little bit older. Actually, it's a lot, it's a lot older, but I've had it for so many years. And that's what I'm telling you in this video is that the equipment that I'm showing you 
it's worth the money look after them and they will last for years and years that's the most important thing sewing equipment you can get quite cheap but in my opinion, you might as well go for the quality stuff, things that will last a bit longer. You know, read reviews and, you know, go for quality stuff. So I'm going to show you the sewing machine and also the overlocker. This is my overlocker or serger. It has a differential feed. And that just basically means that it can sew a variety of um, fabrics. So, yeah, if you are a person that is going to be doing a lot of sewing and you want a quicker method to finish up your seams then I would recommend getting a serger or overlocker and like I said they will last a long time especially if they are overlockers that have a good differential feed so you can change it for different fabrics and I do have quite a lot of video tutorials on how to look after a serger and you know also how to use a serger the one i'm using at the moment is Janome, and this is quite a new machine and it is a computerized sewing machine and if you are a confident beginner then and you want a machine that's more modern then this is a machine that i would recommend um i've been using it for a few months now and i do enjoy it and i do recommend it for beginners who are wanting to upgrade and if you are purchasing a sewing machine for the first time um and you may be fearing going for a a, a sewing machine that has all these computerized buttons and you want a more simplified version of a sewing machine then there is another sewing machine that i do well i can't recommend it because of so the one that i have or the one that i'm kind of given to my mum it's also very very old the only new thing in the supplies that i've shown you is this sewing machine um so if you want something a little bit more basic basic then it is going to be genome genome sewing machines are the sewing machines i've used the most in my fashion sewing journey um but they are other brands that i have used as well well, I hope you found this helpful as a beginner fashion sewer and remember these tools will last a long time. They are quality items so please don't fear the fact that they may be a little bit more expensive than your budget that you have at, mo at the moment. Then it's just a case of buying what you need now and then later on when you're more confident to spend a bit more money then go along and come back to this video, bookmark this video, so that you can go along and purchase other items when you are ready it's going to be there all the time so like i said they are quality they are they are items that i haven't necessarily bought off amazon apart from the scissors because i've had these for decades and they've lasted me for like i said many years so um yeah do enjoy looking at the links and if you have any questions or queries then please put those in the comment box below and please do share this video if you think it will be helpful for any of your friends or anybody that you know who wants to go on a fashion sewing journey and i will see you next time